Welcome to another part of the Core Trust SEAL 2023 to 2025 requirements video series. I am Pascal Floor of Dans, the Dutch Expertise Center and Repository for Research Data. In this video series, we talk you through the new Core Trust SEAL requirements, and you will learn about the details of each requirement, the evidence expected from applicants, extended guidances, and the changes compared to the previous version of the requirements. This video covers requirement number one, mission and scope. It gives a summary and highlights the most important aspects, but please do refer to the full guidelines for the complete requirement text as well as the extended guidelines. If you have not already done so, I also recommend you watch the general introduction video to this series first for general information. The first requirement of Core Seal is mission and scope, and it reads as follows. The repository has an explicit mission to provide access to and preserve digital objects. This requirement makes it explicit that trustworthy repositories or trustworthy digital repositories see it as their role to provide active preservation of and continued access to digital objects and that they should make this clear to depositors and users. So why is this a requirement of a trustworthy digital repository? Repositories take responsibility for the curation of digital objects and for ensuring that materials are held in the appropriate environment for appropriate periods of time. This is key to depositors. They must be able to rely on their digital objects being preserved and, if appropriate, accessible. So it must be clear to depositors and users that active preservation of and continued access to the digital objects is not just assumed, but an explicit role of the repository. Therefore, the evidence that is needed in the response statement for this requirement should make this explicit role very clear. The response statement and the evidence should include references to both the mission as well as the level of approval that the mission has received within the institution normally, but this can also be beyond if that is relevant. What is further important to note uh, is that if the preservation, if preservation is not referred to in the mission of the repository, or in other relevant public documents provided as evidence, then the compliance level cannot be higher than in progress. And evidence for this requirement uh, could include an approved public mission statement, um, but also roles mandated by funders, or for example, a policy statement signed off by a governing board, um, which really should, shows the, the approval rate, of course. And just uh, as a reminder, the evidence should in principle always be public and online, not just for this requirement, for it for all the requirements. Here we have a couple of example statements uh, to explain further what sort of evidence is expected. And please note that these are merely example phrases and by no means complete response statements, right? So the first example is not satisfactory. Um, the repository does not provide evidence of their mission. One could, of course, assume that the repository's mission is to preserve data and keep it accessible, but it is important that this is explicitly stated. And this is exactly what the second example does. It makes it clear that the mission of the repository is to preserve digital resources, and that this is explicitly stated in the policy and where this policy can be found online. So in the actual response statement, a link would be needed here. Uh, the exact topic, uh, if this is digital objects or something else, that might differ between repositories and that is fine. Um, this only covers the preservation aspect, but the third example focuses on the other evidence that is required, the level of approval the mission has received. It's important to state this, otherwise someone could just add, or a repository could just add something to the website, um, but it needs to be shown that wider approval was gained within and if relevant beyond the organization. So what changes have been made to this requirement compared to the previous version of the requirement? The place in the order and structure of the requirements has remained unchanged for this one. It's still number one and it is still related to the topic of organizational infrastructure. What has changed is that data is replaced by digital objects. This is something that has been done throughout the requirements to clarify and broaden the scope. Repositories deal with more than only data. Um, 
Also, in its domain has been removed as it was superfluous and it could be confusing. Uh, so with the other meaning in domain specific, for example. This concludes the instruction on requirement one of the new core trust seal requirements. Similar instruction videos can be found on all the other requirements on the core trust seal YouTube channel. You can find the full set of the new requirements for the period 2023 to 2025 on the core trust seal website. If you have any remaining questions or if you would like more information, please contact Core Trust Seal using the email address shown here.